the first thing I would say is that, is that it is good to see people here in uniform. And you have my great respect for what you've done in these last five years. And equally the volunteers and the activists who've been supporting the front line. Uh, without you, this, none of this would have worked and we would not have been sitting here today. But I would add another group, which is the, uh, the bloggers and journalists who try and do their best to write the truth about what is happening with the Defence Forces and with the country, because they are a vital part of all this as well. A couple of points before I start talking about just the military, and the first one is about the vital importance of transparency and openness of everything that the defence system does, uh, not, not having s secrecy in everything, because the country needs to know what its money is being spent on, and it needs to know what the defence forces are actually doing in their work. The And three things I want to talk about. The first one is operational focus. The second... The second one is structures, and the third one is the, the process of reform itself. Uh, Mrs. Timoshenko mentioned mobility, uh, and it's an important word for the Defence Forces. Uh, mobility is important because you can't fight a war sitting in a trench forever. Because quite simply, if Russia decides it wants to attack, it can attack wherever it wants to in the country, and it can attack with large forces against anywhere it wants to in the Donbas. And then the only way to beat them is to be able to move faster and better than they can. But this brings with it uh, certain challenges for the system. It requires flexibility of thinking. It requires people who can and will make decisions, even if their boss doesn't like it. It requires risk-taking. 
Now these are all good business skills, so I know that Ukraine has them. But they are not the skills that are uh, liked in the current defense system. So for mobility to work, it is important that we choose the best people to be the commanders. Commanders must have the light of Ukraine in their eyes. And unfortunately, that's not always liked. But mobility also means thinking about your equipment, your organization, your training and your education. And if we look at simple things like structures, then the battalion structures were designed for a different life. They were designed for a time when commanders were not allowed to think, they just... They just had to drive and die. Now we need commanders to think, so they must have larger staffs. We have a very successful joint operational headquarters now for the Donbass. But we don't have one for the Sea of Azov and the Black Sea. We don't have one for Kiev. We don't have one for organizing and fighting the reserves. And we don't have a proper joint headquarters for the Ministry of Defence, which is vital. And I've said this many times and I will keep saying it, the General Staff cannot manage a full-scale war if they don't have proper headquarters beneath them. On the reform process, centralization has not worked. Big plans are not working. We need to concentrate on providing the frontline commanders with what they need. And 
finding a business method that lets you do that today, in hours, not in three months' time. Or worse, next year. We need to remove paper from the front line. Soldiers should never have to worry about paper. And it, there should be no paper forward of the Joint Headquarters. Our senior commanders need money to do their job properly. You cannot call the Navy commander a commander if you don't give him money. And if you don't trust him with money, you can't trust him with fighting for your country. And if you ask me on, on reform, the first thing that I would do would be to rip the education and training system apart and get the international community to restart it over the weekend. You now have a good model at Yavri, but it's not being used everywhere else. I think that will do. Thank you.